what's a children's movie nowadays without a few jokes for the parents? Forget your jammies, Mrs. Packard. I sleep in the nude. You're gonna want a pair of these. She sleepwalks. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 innuendos in kids' movies. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at moments from movies generally seen as being made for children or being family friendly that could raise a few eyebrows upon second inspection. <laughs> Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. We're considering potentially inappropriate moments and comments of any nature, whether that's sexually suggestive, legs, you're a ducky, or about something else that kids wouldn't or shouldn't generally know about. <laughs> Love your leg warmers. Nice ascot. Come on, Ken, recess don't last forever. We're excluding films that seem to be equally targeted to both kids and adults alike such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Is that a rabbit in your pocket or you're just happy to see me? <laughs> Number 10, Bo Peep and Woody's Escapades, Toy Story. <coughs> Ow! Oh, hi, Bo. This Pixar classic reinforced what most kids might have already suspected, that our toys were alive. Oh, I'm going for fearsome here, but I just don't feel it. What we didn't realize was what they were really trying to do with their free time. In Toy Story, Bo Peep and Woody, a porcelain figurine and a cowboy doll, are in a relationship. I wanted to thank you, Woody, for saving my flock. Oh, hey, it was, uh, nothing. After Woody saves her flock of sheep from the pretend harms of Mr. Potato Head, Peep uses her cane to draw Woody close and whispers something in his ear. What do you say I get someone else to watch the sheep tonight? <laughs> Hell yeah! Who knows what goes down when two toys are unchaperoned and unwatched. But the grown moviegoers have some idea, and it's not all kid stuff. Remember, I'm just a couple of blocks away. Number nine, Ladybug Come On, A Bug's Life. There's a bug-eat-bug world out there, princess. Who knew bugs were so sexually aggressive? Another Pixar gem. This computer animated film centers on an ant colony that is essentially bullied into providing food for grasshoppers every year. What's the matter? You scared of grasshoppers? They recruit a team of warrior bugs to protect them after their latest food offering winds up destroyed. But these warrior bugs are actually a traveling circus act. Stand back, ye flies! We are the greatest warriors in all bugdom! This includes Francis, the gruff but visually appealing male ladybug that everyone thinks is a female. And as such, is constantly being hit on, usually in some really crude ways. Yeah. So, being a ladybug automatically makes me a girl! Is that it, flyboy? Most notable is this request to pollinate. Which, you know, is a wink and a nudge for something a little more adult. Hey, cutie! Wanna pollinate with a real bug? Yeah, yeah. Number eight, oral sex insinuation, the brave little toaster. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, toaster. As far as kids' films go, this one was surprisingly dark at times. I hate being left in the dark, you know. Especially considering the franchise is populated by household appliances and semi-orgasmic computers. My memory banks are being stroked. And by an expert, I feel something, something happening inside of me and I can't keep it to myself any longer. The story follows a group of appliances led by a toaster who heads out into the world in search of their beloved owner. You ready to go, Blanket? Yeah, I'm ready. But before they leave, they trade some rather icy words with an air conditioning unit doing a Jack Nicholson impersonation. Somebody untie the knot in this guy's cord. While the unit attempts to shame and humiliate the crew for its mission, it throws a particularly inappropriate barb at the vacuum. Why don't you just shut off? Because we all know what vacuums do really well. Hey, I'm real scared there, Kirby. What are you gonna do, suck me to death? <laughs> Number seven, Genie and the Earthquake, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Hey, I want to see some resumes on these guys. When you've been cooped up in a bottle for a few thousand years, chances are your mind can get stuck on some dirty things. What? What are you trying to say? Unlike the first Aladdin sequel, this second follow-up to the 1992 smash hit did feature the genius comedic stylings of Robin Williams. 
And it also gave us quite a few interesting lines. And your name is? I'm Thor. You're Thor? Well, it hurts. During one scene in particular, bandits show up at Jasmine and Aladdin's wedding, and the vibrations from the rampaging elephants cause Genie to make a not-so-subtle reference to wedding night consummation. I thought the Earth wasn't supposed to move until the honeymoon. Because what kid doesn't know what goes down in the honeymoon suite? Wink. Okay. Number six, Anna and foot size, Frozen. I can't wait to meet everyone. The sisterly bond may have provided the happily ever after in this Disney hit, but that doesn't mean there weren't any man-related adventures along the way. Well, he was sprightly. Ah, especially for a man in heels. <laughs> Princess Elsa has magical ice powers and has unleashed an eternal winter on the kingdom of Arendelle. It's completely frozen. Her sister Anna sets out after her to help make things right, but not before making the acquaintance of a young gentleman. Oh, Christopher! It's Kristoff! On their journey to locate Elsa, Anna informs Kristoff that their argument was prompted by her impromptu engagement to a man she'd met the same day. Didn't your parents ever warn you about strangers? Kristoff chastises Anna, stating that she doesn't know anything about him, including his shoe size. What's his favorite food? Sandwiches. Best friend's name? Probably John. Eye color. Dreamy. Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. Which doesn't matter. Until it does. Look, it doesn't matter. It's true love. Number five. Cat and the Ho, the Cat in the Hat. Why, I'm the Cat in the Hat! Mike Myers gives an almost unrecognizable performance as the famed Dr. Seuss character. There's no doubt about that. I'm a super fun, different feline who's here to make sure that you're. me line. In the fantasy comedy, he plays the feline with the red and white hat and a penchant for mischief who appears to show two little kids how to have a good time. Okay, we had some good times. Hijinks ensue, like thing one and thing two. And a good chunk of the film is just family fun. It's fun to have fun, but you got to know how. But it wouldn't be a children's movie without a wink at the adults. And here we're treated to a moment between the cat and a garden tool. Time to die. One that is both tender and a little awkward. Dirty hoe. Number four, Mrs. Potato Head's Mouth, Toy Story 3. The Potato Heads, Mr. and Mrs. You gotta keep them together because they're madly in love. Disney and Pixar writers are good at including a number of adult references so the bigger kids can relate. But what happens when the kids grow up? Some are innocent and others, well, they're a little tongue in cheek, so to speak. This third installment in the Toy Story trilogy follows Woody and his toy friends after they end up at a daycare center. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. The leader of the center's toys, Lotso, has proven himself to be on the evil side and is about to imprison the new toys when Mrs. Potato Head starts giving him an earful. Sweet potato, who do you think you're talking to? I have over 30. He responds by yanking off her detachable lips, prompting her husband to declare ownership of her mouth. No one takes my wife's mouth except me. Give it back, you furry air freshener. Number three, Snow White's body count, Shrek. Magic mirror. This DreamWorks hit starring Mike Myers as the title character, tells the story of an ogre who saves a princess and then falls in love with her. The ogre has fallen in love with the princess. That course of events actually ends up thwarting the plans of the diminutive Lord Farquaad, who has his own designs on the princess. You're not a king yet, <laughs> but, but you can become one. All you have to do is marry a princess. In fact, he was actually looking for any princess, really, since his plan involves utilizing her nobility to become a king. Just sit back and relax, my lord, because it's time for you to meet today's eligible bachelorettes. And prior to settling on Princess Fiona, he consulted the magic mirror about Snow White, with her living situation and perhaps her sexual proclivities coming curiously into question. Although she lives with seven other men, she's not easy. Number two, tirade of euphemisms, Mrs. Doubtfire. Doubtfire, dear? Mrs. Doubtfire. In this family-friendly comedy, Robin Williams plays Daniel Hillard, an out-of-work voice actor who goes into full costume as a nanny to be closer to his kids. I'm not who you think I am. Yeah, no shit. 
Watch your mouth, young man. The movie is a vehicle for William's comedic genius, with plenty of slapstick, <laughs> but also tons of snappy dialogue that might have flown past the radar of younger viewers. A fellow gives a gift like that, he wants more than a piece of a heart, eh? <laughs> Bit of a going down payment, huh? Excuse me? In one particular scene, Daniel slash Mrs. Doubtfire confronts his wife's new beau and launches into a spiel of sex synonyms. Sink the sub. Hide the weasel, park the porpoise. Bit of the old Humpty Dumpty. Little Jack Horney. The horizontal mumbo. Hmm? Where's the start fire? The bone dancer. Rumple foreskin. Baloney bop. Bit of the old cunning linguistics. That and the part about her autoerotic bedroom activities are decidedly not G-rated. I hope you're up for a little competition. I beg your pardon? She's got a power tool in the bedroom, dear. It's her personal jackhammer. She could break sidewalk with that thing. <clears throat> she uses it in the lights, dim. It's like a prison movie. Oh. Maybe she hasn't chipped her teeth. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, yeah! we There are a couple of things I know they're bound to notice. Well, if those are the teeth, and that's the tongue, then that must be the uvula. So it's a girl house. What? No! It stimulates the gag reflex. Everyone has a uvula. Uh, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Whoa! You're flying! It's okay, I'm used to it. I lived through the 60s. Uh, all right. Who knows where this Farquad guy is? Oh, I do. I know where he is. Number one, spit or swallow ratatouille. Ratatouille. It's like a stew, right? Why do they call it that? This rodent-based Pixar film tells the tale of a rat who loves cooking. You are better than that. You are a cook. He loves it so much that he teams up with a human and uses the bigger mammal's body to create mind-blowing, one-of-a-kind recipes. He's the cook, the real cook. He's been hiding under my toque. He's been controlling my actions. The partnership works out so well that their food attracts the attention of a notorious food critic with exceedingly high standards. You're Anton Ego. <laughs> You're slow for someone in the fast lane. Anton Ego's standards are so high, in fact, that he doesn't even like to keep the food in his mouth if he's not satisfied. And you're thin for someone who likes food. All of this sounds innocent enough, maybe. I don't like food, I love it. But we know what you're thinking, and we know what the writers were thinking, too. If I don't love it, I don't swallow. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the best kids movie innuendo? Who's Velocistar 237? Oh, that, that's just a dinosaur toy down the street. That's nothing. Let me just take care of that. Just a dinosaur. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, love that new ball smell.